Hello, I'm John Cunningham, and welcome to another episode of the Red Chip Money Report. For those of you new to the show, Red Chip is an investor relations, media, and research firm focused on emerging growth companies. Our unique platform combines global multimedia with traditional investor relations, reaching investors around the world. Now, today's show features interviews with executives of two public companies. First up is American Noble Gas, stock symbol IFNY on the OTC QB. American Noble Gas is an oil and gas exploration, development, and production company with a history of operations in Texas, Kansas, Oklahoma, and the Rocky Mountain region of the U.S. The company is currently exploring and developing natural gas, helium, and other noble gases and brine minerals contained in the Hugoton gas field, which is a prolific natural gas and helium gas field. We'll learn more when we speak with the CEO and president of American Noble Gas, Stan Ross, later in the show. Up next is Quest Microsystems, stock symbol KWE on the NASDAQ. Quest is the developer of next generation tactical systems for military, security, and personal defense markets. Later in today's show, you will see an interview with David Luxton, Executive Chairman of Quest. Now before we get to the first interview, our quote of the week. It comes from the book, Small Stocks, Big Money. You can be happy with the companies you own, but you may not be happy with their stock performance. If you know what you're investing in and you're patient, you'll have a day when the market recognizes the value, but that may not be today or tomorrow. This quote comes from Byron Roth, CEO of Roth Capital, featured in Chapter 7 of Small Stocks, Big Money. This is a book of exclusive interviews with some of the biggest players in the microcap space. Get a digital copy on Amazon today for just $18. Now let's get started with our first interview today with American Noble Gas. Hello, we are pleased to have the CEO of American Noble Gas, Stan Ross, with us in the studio today. American Noble Gas trades on the OTC markets under the ticker symbol IFNY. Stan, great to have you here. Great to be here, thank you. American Noble Gas recently expanded in the Helia market, Stan. Tell us more about this move and what it means for the company. Yeah, so, um IFNY, you know, American Noble Gas used to be called Infinity Energy Resources. And we had quite a bit of success way back, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Uh, the company ended up selling off the majority of the assets. And about three years ago, it got back into the energy sector. And by doing so, it made actually three acquisitions. But one that we're very proud of is the acquisition that we made in the Yucatan field and the opportunities that are, that are there. Tell us more about that Yugaton gas field. I understand, Stan, that it's a prolific natural gas and helium gas field in the states of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. It's the fifth largest natural gas source in the United States. Just tell us more. I want to hear more about the drilling operations and that farm out agreement, too. Yeah, so it's exciting for us. We were able to uh, go into a field that's been established, you know, way back in the 40s, even, and, and a lot of people have looked at that field as depleted. And we had taken uh, some of our engineering team and looked at areas that may have been overlooked, you know, in the past and tried to figure out, okay, is there something that's missing? Well, we believe we have found that. Matter of fact, we've already drilled our first well and have had quite a bit of success. We went into a, a different zone that had not uh, been produced from for some time. And not only did we have quite a bit of success in finding the natural gas, but it also had a real nice cut of helium. So while well, you may be getting you know, eight, nine dollars at MCF for your natural gas, your helium will bring multiples higher than that. And in our situation, the infrastructure is already there as far as the pipelines, the processing plant, and we were able to negotiate a farm out agreement that allows us, if we go in and drill and do additional work, we earn acreage. Not only did we negotiate the ability to develop the ground, but we negotiated with the processing plant to where we pay them their proportionate share of the helium, but we have our helium on the backside of the plant. So instead of selling helium at $250 an MCF, we actually can now sell to an end user at $800 an MCF. 
So it's a great economic model, and we're very fortunate that as of right now, the, it looks like it could be quite a success. Sounds very compelling, Stan. American Noble Gas also owns a 60% interest in leases covering about 10,000 acres in central and south Kansas near the Oklahoma border, and that currently produces about 100 barrels of oil a day yeah. and a million and a half cubic feet of natural gas. Tell us more about your plans for these going ahead. So that was a beautiful acquisition. Again, we, we acquired it at the right time when oil prices were down. Matter of fact, as uh, during this acquisition, and give you a little bit of an idea of the strength of this acquisition, approximately 80% of this acquisition was financed through traditional means, meaning through a bank. And so there's got to be a lot of um, uh, positiveness about that for us, the cash flow. And it is true. And so well, we acquired it with oil prices, you know, around the $35 range. Obviously, they've went much, much higher. And so the cash flow off of it has just been amazing. And there's a lot of additional wells that we can drill, what we call infill drilling. So you're not really exploration. I mean, you know that you're in the region where oil and gas have been found. Uh, there's no reason because of the geology to think that 300 yards that way, you're not going to also have a successful well. So we're very excited about it. And, and it is cash flowing real well for us. Stan, introduce us to some of the key members of your team, please. Well, the, the key members, you know, obviously, Tom Heckman, who I've worked with a previous company, he has been very instrumental. He's changing roles that he's currently at and will be taking on a much more active role within that. And Tom's background is, he has oil and gas background and also a strong accounting background. Uh, we put together a strong team of engineers and guys that are also specialized in helium. Too many to mention on, at this take, and it's, but uh, you know, on our website, uh, when you look at the bios, um, it's just very impressive, and, and they're very excited about um, the helium find that we have. Stan, give us the essential value proposition behind American Noble Gas. Why should an investor take an interest in the company today? Yeah, uh, you know, one of the things, you know, we have uh, really just, up, we're almost an up and starting company, even though it's, it has been around for some time, but these three new assets that we brought into it are both, two of them strongly are cash flowing. The third one has a lot of, of uh, potential that, that we hope to expand on in 2023. But if you just even look at the cash flow, the EBITDA that, that we will be kicking off in 2023, it's in excess of $2 million. That's not a big number, but I mean, we're, I think our market cap's only $4 million. So when you look at the, the valuations there, you're like, okay, wait a minute here. And, they, and, and realize that not only do we have the success, but that farm out agreement allows us to potentially earn up to 400,000 acres in the Yucatan field. And I don't think you're going to find um, you know, companies our size uh, with that kind of upside potential. It's a great story, Stan. Thanks for telling it to us today. Yeah, glad to be here. Thank you. Now to get more information on American Noble Gas, visit ifnyinfo.com. You'll see research reports, fact sheets, presentations, and the latest videos. It's all free. You can even subscribe to email alerts to stay on top of the latest news. You can also call 1-800-REDSHIP to speak to a specialist if you have any questions. We also have a free weekly newsletter you can subscribe to at redchip.com featuring emerging growth companies like American Noble Gas. Again, visit redchip.com and subscribe today. In addition to our newsletter, you can order Small Stocks Big Money. This is a book written by Redchip CEO featuring interviews with some of the biggest players in the microcap space. Get a digital copy on Amazon for just $18. Now let's move on to our next interview today with Quest Microsystems. We have with us David Luxton, Executive Chairman of Quest Microsystems, trading on NASDAQ, ticker symbol KWE. Thanks for being with us today, David. Uh, great to be with you, thanks. And congratulations on the, uh, your recent NASDAQ listing and some pretty big news recently. Why don't you start by giving a brief overview to the audience of Quest's current operations? Sure, so uh, Quest develops and commercializes some high value technology for the defense and homeland security industry. And uh, the three areas we're focused on are areas we know a lot about, where we have unique technology, and, uh, and, and that encompasses 
what's called digitization. In other words, bringing situational awareness in real time to soldiers in the field. Uh, it's a very important part of the future plans of military everywhere because it's the missing piece in what they call the digital divide for modern forces. That has application as well in the Homeland Security market, uh, something we've just uh, started on for a national public security agency. Some of that technology we have, uh, we then employ in some specific counter threat products against some of the threats on the modern battlefield. Things like lasers, for example, uh, things like having your location detected electronically. You have to fool the enemy so they don't really know where you are from their eavesdropping. And then a new area for us, we're just entering now with a technology that's really quite a breakthrough technology is in the non-lethal field. And this is really a, an exciting technology that we believe can uh, replace many of the legacy systems out there that weren't designed to kill people, but they have in big numbers. And we have a technology that will prevent that kind of thing. Very exciting, David. And, uh, you know, some of the, the most successful investors I've ever worked with have looked at long term prospects of companies like General Dynamics. I noticed you had a, a nice contract with them that this uh, recent week announced that could lead to potentially 40 million in revenue for next year. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, you're talking about our phantom system and phantom, uh, which I won't say too, too much about for security reasons, but what it does is it spoofs or fools an enemy force into thinking where you are. And this is a miniaturized system, so it can be sprinkled in the battlefield by troops or by drones. And it's now emitting what looks like, sounds like NATO communications. But these are all spoof communications. That's why it's called a phantom. And so now the enemy force is detecting what they think is an adversary in many different locations. There's a military formation here, another one over there, something else here of different kinds. And it causes the enemy to have to stop and conduct reconnaissance, even waste their ordnance. Uh, of various kinds on these phantom positions. And so meanwhile, that keeps our own friendly forces undetected for that much longer so they can complete their mission in safety. Well, we certainly appreciate the hard work you're doing to protect our troops and now working with one of the largest uh, companies in North America for defense. Uh, any other big contracts that you know, have this type of potential? Well, we're working with another big division of uh, General Dynamics, General Dynamics Mission Systems. And uh, the Gen General Dynamics Mission Systems does situational awareness and shared information systems on big platforms, things that go on big armored vehicles or go in command uh, headquarters operations. Uh, again, the missing piece has been to provide this same information on a shared basis in real time in battlefield conditions for the soldier on the ground who's never been able to have that level of information. And this confers a couple of big benefits. One is that it, it uh, keeps them safer by keeping them more informed. They know now exactly where they are, where their comrades are, where their military assets are. Uh, they can get video feeds from drones and they can even put this same system onto their weapon systems. And we, uh, we did a million dollar contract for uh, a U.S. military customer, an important one, that showed this working on uh, 81 millimeter mortar. And that's a real workhorse uh, item, weapon platform for military everywhere. It'll go on many, many different kinds of platforms. And as the soldiers who were using it said, boy, this is just like playing a video game because now their mortar team can be further back, can be behind cover, and can basically have their mortar platform in the fight in just over a minute instead of the usual 15 to 20 minutes it takes them to do that. So they're safer and because the weapon system itself through our our system now knows 
exactly where the enemy is. It can calculate all the ballistics needed automatically, and the soldier just fires and forgets, putting the cursor on the target on the video screen that's on the mortar. And they end up getting a level of precision out of that that's never been seen before. So this, again, makes a soldier more effective and it keeps them safer. And so we're very pleased to be working with uh, General Dynamics Mission Systems to provide this layer of the future soldier systems, as they're being called. I imagine the market for these types of products must be incredibly large. Why don't you talk a little bit about your business model? Right. Well, you're absolutely right. And we are addressing these markets uh, in part because of their size, in part because we know them so well. Uh, this isn't our first rodeo. We've had some notable successes in previous incarnations. But the uh, markets are in the multi, multi billions of dollars in each segment that we're addressing. So that we think that each segment that we're focusing on uh, has the ability to become, the potential to become a very, very significant business. Again, something we know a lot about because in previous incarnations, we started with a nascent technology, had a few early orders, very favorable evaluations by customers that brought in the big defense contractors who wanted to go to market with us. And that's an important part of our go to market model. And so we think this is a, a great opportunity to be building out a long-term business that's very sizable and where there are, frankly, many ways to win. David, congratulations again on this NASDAQ uplisting where you raised more than $14 million. How do you plan to deploy this capital and how do you think it could lead to more growth? So we have a few uses for the capital. Uh, one is to begin uh, the supply ramp up of some of our systems that are now ready for prime time and we're processing orders. So we have to deliver these first units. And uh, uh, as well, we're, uh, we're rolling out our non-lethal business called Para Ops. More to follow on that. There'll be a big launch of that at the the big event called the SHOT Show in Las Vegas in January, biggest event of its kind in the world. Uh, so uh, I hope everyone will stay tuned for that. It's pretty exciting what it does. And we're reserving some of this capital as well for some opportunistic tuck-in acquisitions. Uh, we already did one a year ago with a product called Arwen. And in that year since, we have double the revenue of that company, and we're looking at doubling it again uh, in this coming 2023 year. So those are the primary uses of the uh, capital, and uh, we're very fortunate, as you were noting, to be in the defense and security space, because when markets are tough, as you mentioned, economies uh, go into challenging times, the world becomes unstable as it is geopolitically, the sad truth is that the defense and security business is a great sector to be in. Budgets are rising everywhere with defense departments, and uh, it's a great tide to be riding. Maybe speak to your team a little bit and um, you know some of your past background and history and uh, strengths. So uh, one of the advantages we have is the deep experience of the team, particularly in relevant areas like electronic countermeasures, which is uh, what the battlefield has become all about primarily. If you, you can't win electronically, you can't win, period. And uh, an example of that in my own background was the, the global build out of a company that became uh, one of the leading suppliers of counter IED equipment. Uh, that was bomb suits and, and uh, bomb disposal robots. But very importantly, electronic countermeasures and it's a great analog to the I mean the playbook we're taking a page from here because uh, it had a nascent technology that could prevent the remote detonation of roadside bombs which you remember the headlines were killing people in big numbers every day and uh, the first sales of that became uh, modest it was in fact primarily for uh, bomb disposal techs in the first instance, but then it became the kind of protection everybody had to have, foot patrols, vehicle patrols, and uh, and so this just mushroomed into a vast market where we ended up selling hundreds of millions of dollars 
right, of these jammers and virtually shut down that problem on the battlefield. There are other ways of, of deploying and uh, detonating roadside bombs, but the preferred way to do it was remotely electronically, and we just shut that down and the casualty rates just dropped to uh, almost zero. So that's the playbook. We've been there, done it before. In the course of that, we were working with major defense contractors like Lockheed Martin and General Dynamics. And the other area where we have a deep background, myself uh, in particular, is in non-lethal systems, uh, where I've created and founded um, companies that still to this day dominate their niche globally. They're very significant um, businesses. And uh, one of them was Simunition, another company I headed up for several years. Uh, was a company called United Tactical Systems as a product that's well known in uh, law enforcement around the world. And that's called Pepperball. So you can go to pepperball.com or simunition.com to, uh, to see examples of the kinds of things that we've done before. Uh, this new non-lethal technology we have, it's really a breakthrough and a departure from all of that and all other things that are on the market. So we've been there, done it, succeeded before. We know what it takes, you know, it's hard work doesn't happen overnight, uh, but the growth potential, the results and the rewards for us and for shareholders, you know, can be enormous. Maybe just sum it up for us here today, David. Well, uh, I hope that folks will get as excited as, as we are about, first of all, the purposeful nature of our mission here. And it is to save lives and it is to deliver what the US military calls an overmatch capability. They're not interested in a fair fight. You take casualties in a fair fight. They want overmatch capability. That's what we deliver. And we've got uh, unique proprietary high value technologies to enable that. We've got uh, many ways to hit a home run when you drill down into each of those and look at the traction they're starting to get in the marketplace. And uh, so our expectation is that 2023 will be a good year to be in the uh, in the Quest stock. Uh, it's the year we transition really from some sales of onesies and twosies for evaluation into a real ramp up for operational procurement and use uh, in the field. Amazing, David. I happen to agree. You know, Quest, NASDAQ listed KWE. Congratulations on that listing recently and all this progress and the many lives I'm sure your team will be saving. Thank you again for being with us today. It's really an honor. Thank you, privilege. Now to get more information on Quest Microsystems, visit kweinfo.com. You'll see research reports, fact sheets, presentations, and the latest videos. It's all free. You can even subscribe to email alerts to stay on top of the latest news. You can also call 1-800-REDSHIP to speak to a specialist if you have any questions. We also have a free weekly newsletter you can subscribe to at redchip.com featuring emerging growth companies like Quest Microsystems. Again, visit redchip.com and subscribe today. In addition to our newsletter, you can also order Small Stocks, Big Money. This is a book written by Redchip CEO featuring interviews with some of the biggest players in the microcap space. Get a digital copy on Amazon for just $18. Now let's recap the companies you met today. First you met American Noble Gas, stock symbol IFNY on the OTCQB. American Noble Gas is positioned to become a material producer of high-grade helium for international markets with farm-out agreements in place to develop within the prolific Hugoton gas field. The Hugoton gas field is the largest continuous conventional helium and natural gas field in North America. And it's a historic center of the world's helium production with cumulative production of over 300 billion cubic feet of helium and over 75 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. Again, to learn more about American Noble Gas, visit ifnyinfo.com. Then you met Quest Microsystems, stock symbol KWE on the NASDAQ.
Quest is addressing a $64 billion global market, and they've established a strong foundation serving military customers with its innovative digital transformation solutions. Now the company is expanding its focus to include public safety agencies. This is a significant unaddressed market opportunity in the U.S. Again, to learn more about Quest, visit kweinfo.com. Again, if you have any questions about any of the public companies featured on today's show, please call us at 1-800-RED-CHIP or email us at info at redchip.com. In closing, remember, while small caps can provide significant gains, you must be prepared for the downside. Small cap stocks are among the most volatile asset class. Some of the companies featured on this show are red chip client companies, and we may own stock in these companies. So please always read our disclosures at redchip.com. Thanks for being with us today. We'll see you next week with some new, exciting, emerging growth companies.